I have a new microphone. Hello there. This is Toby. Toby, this is the camera. Camera, Toby. You get the idea. I had a little technical issues last week, so I bought a new, a, a, a new, a new microphone. But that wasn't an issue. I was stupid. Now I have two microphones, and um, and I need to show her apparently after this. We'll see how that happens. As you see here, I have this little animation for you that I'm going to show you how you can do this inside creature completely for free kids i don't know if you know this character yes i copy it from another music video no this is not the joker where is it i saw this music video i'm like oh that's a very cool idea but the other thing that i thought hey you can do that you can actually do that in creature all you need to have is illustration and you have creature and uh, we're gonna animate this very very simple here's the original the it's very simple, very minimalistic movement, but it does sell the effect. And also, the other thing that's selling it is the illustration itself. So, if your illustrations are not in that particular style, you will not get the same effect. So, that's what I did here. I look at my creature, he's very depressed. I mean, he has no ketchup. I mean, I would be depressed if I have no ketchup, let's just be honest. Uh, but this is the scene that this whole scene that you see here has has been made in Critter. And if you want to know on this character, you can from the description now below. So let's get into this, right? So you can use Critter to cut the elements that you want to animate. But when you, when you have more than one character or when you have more something more complicated, chances are your animation may crash, your program may crash. Uh, right now in Creature, we have two types of timelines. One is called the animation timeline, the other one is called animation curves. I want to sneeze so bad. Oh, no sneeze, no sneeze. Oh. So these are the two types of timelines. One of them is the animation timeline, which is for frame by frame animation. The other animation timeline is animation curves, which is specifically for uh, creating animation. In order to get those, if you don't have them, uh, go to settings. Uh, dockers and the second one is the animation curves and the other one is animation timeline. Ideally you would like to have both of them and you can position them anywhere on your screen. I just chose to put them can I? There we are. Put them next to each other so I can switch between both of them. It's just easier. So you're gonna start completely from scratch, okay? Let's just make a new file. And I'm gonna go with these dimensions. I'm gonna hit create. And we're gonna have, if I move this a little bit up, and we're gonna have a blank canvas. Here's my illustration of Ed. We don't have the elements on separate layers, and that's what we need to do first. So you, you can just drag and drop the stuff in Krita like this. Uh, import this as a new layer, and you're gonna have Ed, the, the vampire slash. Whatever. Uh, so he's on one layer. Everything that you see here is on one layer, except in the background. So how we can start cutting it? Well, he's gonna live after this, I hope. Um. So there are a couple of tools that you need to take your attention on. And this is this tool, this tool, this tool, this tool. Even this tool, even this tool, even this tool, even this tool. This tool. Now we're not gonna use all of them. We're gonna use some of them. Okay. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna sneeze actually first, and then we're gonna use the oh, yeah. So what we're going to use here is uh, this tool over here. This is the basic curve selection tool. Uh, it, it will allow us to maneuver around uh, hard um, edges and stuff like that. So let me click this. We are on the edge layer, which is the picture that we have. Uh, and now we have to be very precise how we cut his hand because we're gonna move the hand. Again, this is one drawing, and you can. Uh, I'm gonna use just the mouse. You can zoom in and out with the window button of the mouse. If you hold the window button of the mouse, you can move around the canvas. The thing with the Bezier too, uh, it's uh, it's like the pen tool in any other program. Maybe we can start from. As you see, the more I zoom in, the more I see the pixels. I press a point. Now I have a point with a handle of it that like this weird line coming out of it, and I can still use my middle button of the mouse to move around or zoom in and out which is very nice so now we're gonna cut around if you press uh on the next um uh, not next button on the next point and you 
um, <coughs> pull out a handle out of it, right? You see that your line now has a little curve to it. So you, you have to do your best. You have to try to cut as much as accurate you can be to the lines that you see here. And if you mess, if you make a, uh, if you let's say, if I do this, you see the line is going through. Uh, in this case, it could be in the shoulder. We don't want to do that. We don't. We, we want to come over here. You made a mistake. That's no problem. You can fix that by pressing the right button of your mouse. So I'm gonna take some time to cut out the hand. Obviously, this part here is not part of the hand with the ketchup. So uh, let's see how we can do this. We have a selection here. As you notice, I kind of went all uh, outside because this part here is like there's nothing. It's transparent, so I can do that. But when it comes to the body itself, I try to cut as much as I can. Um, this is not yet cut. What you need to do is once you get your selection done, um, you need to click the right button of your mouse, and then you can cut this to a new selection. Boom. Now. I, you need to deselect your selection, obviously, and you can do that from uh, select and then deselect. Now, if I we have three layers here. If we don't count the, the background layer, we have two layers. One layer with the hand, I, my amazing cutting. Um, yes, it's, it's, it's amazing. And obviously, the body itself. Now, there's a problem, as I said, once we start cutting our uh, stuff. Because what we need to do from now on is to grab the transform tool and change the anchor point and start moving this uh, in this direction. Like he's gonna do some catch up action here. Uh, the problem is once we start moving the cut out part, um, we're gonna see the the gaps. We're gonna see the empty space that is over here. So we need to cover this up. Uh, basically, what you need to do is try, you need to redraw the missing parts of the costume of the missing parts of the character that are going to be visible one way or another. So what you can do is, if you have a tablet, use the tablet. If not, uh, pick how uh, well you're going to make your animations, uh, what, which part of the body you want to animate in order for this to work. Let's say for the head, we can cut out the head, we can make the head move as well. Here we have to uh, paint here and maybe the neck. But with the hand, we need to basically paint this part to be like it, it wasn't cut, right? So there's a couple, if you go to the brushes, there are a couple of brushes you can um, use to, um, this is my favorite brush, right? So what you can do is, if you hold control on your keyboard, you can pick the color. Uh, in this case, this is the color, and you can just pick this. And I'm just using the mouse, which is not ideal for me. So I can just redraw stuff by using my pen. So it's just this is just easier for me. And I can only imagine where this will be. Maybe something like this. Okay, something like this. Maybe the costume goes there. The hand here, if I bring the, this, yeah, something like this, maybe, and I don't know, we just gonna improvise and imagine how this will look. So far we cut the lines, and now we can just color in, and if I was smart, I will make a new layer beneath my drawing, the drawing that we're working on, and I'm just gonna color this like that. Now, if your coloring tool, which is the uh, paint bucket tool, if it's not working properly, go to settings, then dockers, dockers, there you go. And we're looking for something called two options. So we're going to press that, and I just hide it. So let's just do that again. Uh, two, two options, there we go, check in. It pops up here for me, but if, for you, it may pop somewhere else on the screen, so that's fine. Uh, these are my options for my uh, bucket fill tool, uh, I think it's called bucket fill tool, or just fill tool, I, I forgot already. But the sample here is the crucial one, when you select this to be all layers, the bucket tool or the fill tool will see all of the layers visible on your screen. So that's uh, that's the thing that, uh, that's, that's very useful. Good. Uh, if you don't have a tablet, it's, this will be a little bit trickier for you, I'm not gonna lie. 
So this is what we have. Now if I bring back the, the hand and just to test out, I'm gonna select my transform tool and I'm just gonna put the anchor point, point here and I'm just gonna do this. It looks so much better. There's no gaps there now. So that's good. So we kind of fix our main issue with this. So even though we didn't have everything on the separate layer like the hand, the head and whatever, we still can work around this. We can cut around the parts and we can um, you know, stitch the holes in a way like that. Uh, obviously, I can merge these two layers by holding Control over there and Control and E to merge them. And the other thing, maybe we can cut is the head. I don't want to use my pen for this. Let's just use again the basic curve to layer. If I zoom in a little bit, if I hit the, I'm trying to cut as much as I can next to. The lines, obviously, that's impossible because look at the lines, they're not very clean lines. Because I drew this, I know uh, I could have used a cleaner brush for this, but I just like the look of this one. And uh, and the rest, uh, uh, I can't, I shouldn't like go to every single part of the head. I mean, I can just do this once you get to your first. Point, then it makes, uh, makes a selection, and put on this one, and then cut to the new layer, and then control shift and A for quick deselection over there. So now we don't have the hood. Now, what we're going to do with the head? Is it going to go down? Yeah, we can do this instead because if we, if we go up, now we see the, the part where this was cut, and I don't want to draw again to try to fix this, so I can just make the head just bump like that. Uh, and because I cut this very, oi, uh, very nice lips, Eddie. Uh, yeah, you can see that, that this part over here. You can try to fix this, but it's, I don't know. I will leave it like this for now. So what we need to do now is to once we have all of the elements that we want to animate on a separate list, then we can animate them. But remember, <laughs> uh, hit Control and S to save your file once in a while. Now I have. Uh, File called Ed, and I'm just gonna call this cut out. There we go. I'm gonna save this. There we go. So now, if the program crashes, then I can go back from this stage, and everything will be fine. I want to feel hot. Damn it. As I said, we have two types of timelines. Now we're gonna use only. I break my desk before that. We're gonna use only the animation curves timeline. Uh, which is over here for me again. If you don't know where it's zeros, you can always find it the way I showed you earlier in the video. Uh, by default, if you press this one over here, this is a drop down menu, you're gonna see where your animation starts and where your animation ends. Nifty, right? And your animation rate. Um, you can lower this to 12 actually because this is the cut out animation, it has this lower, like a uh, very choppy look to it. So you can put your animation frame rate to be 12, or you can keep it at 24. Don't make this bigger, it's just not worth it. Um, now, we're gonna have 100 frames to animate this. We can do, we can animate this um, at lower, uh, uh, not at lower frame rate, but we can make our animation to end, uh, let's say on 72 frame. Click enter there, and you will see how the, yeah, if I move this, Move it your final um frame of your animation. Uh, so this is my animation curves, animation timeline for the curves. This is where we make our um training animation. It's like it's a, it's a new feature by the way, so you may not have this. I'm gonna leave you a link in the description for Krita 5, the, the better version of this, okay? The, that version has it, but it's very unstable, so you may crash, you may not crash. I don't know. So what we need to do is we can name our layers. This is the body. Double click on your layers so you can name them. This is the body layer. Press enter. This is the button that you can make your keyframes inside this animation timeline. So I'm gonna press this one, and uh, it will pop one. Um, usually it's a red dot, which on the side you will see what this red dot uh, is associated with. That's the opacity. Now I don't want to change the opacity of this. The I want to change the position of this. How to get the frame for the position if I want to change that? Well, you need to know that when once you want to animate 
Twin, to do a twinning animation is like twist your layer that you want to animate, despite of that layer being already animated, you have to have a thing called transformation mask. Or also, I keep calling it transformation mask. Is it transformation? It's transform mask. I'm genius. So this is the head, right? I'm gonna remove this keyframe like this. This is my head. Pretty accurate, I know. Uh, right button on the head, and then go to add. And then you can add that transport that transformation mask, transform mask to your layer. Now, once you have that transform mask to your layer, now you can animate that layer in the uh in that animation curves timeline. So make sure you select your transform mask that you want to animate. This is the transform mask of the head in this case. And then once you come here on your first key uh first frame, which in our case, this is from in Twitter. We start animating from frame zero to you know beyond. So this is my first uh, frame in, in general. I'm gonna add a keyframe. Now we have a bunch of other uh, options here, a bunch of other positions, and a couple of other uh, points that we now have. And I'm gonna come here to the last. Uh, keyframe, which uh, last frame, which is the seventy-two uh, frame that I earlier changed. That I'm gonna add again another keyframe, and now we have uh, a couple of keyframes here. Nothing really changes because we didn't move the position of the head. The moment we start moving the position of the head, then we can see some changes. So around frame uh, frame twelve, I'm gonna zoom in. Not that, not that, not that close yet, and um. We're gonna go down a little bit like this. Ooh, too much. And then on frame 24, maybe. We're gonna come here again. Again, we have to make sure that we have that we're working with the transform mask of the layer that we want to animate. So we go, go up, not that up, because we see the, the cut there is visible. We don't want that. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if we can um, copy and paste frames here. The more you uh, move uh, your. Your transform mask already it has keyframes, uh, from one side and from the other side, so it's easier uh, to all the problem to. Okay, so now I have to add a frame. It adds the frames automatically. Okay, okay. Now we have a couple of frames happening. Uh, the position should be moving. So when I play, uh, play, it will have this subtle movement of the head. But we see uh, that the cut here is not visible. It's a bit slow. So maybe we can change the frame rate to be... What is the frame rate? To be 24. Let's see. Yeah. 24. It's kind of better for me. And we can keep that. And now we can do the exact same thing with the hand. The hand doesn't have a transform uh, mask. So we need to add that to the hand. Right bucks in there. Add. Add the transform mask. Again, we are in the animation curves timeline, and we can start adding one keyframe here, and one keyframe over there. And around here, maybe, I can come back here, uh, move my anchor point. Your anchor point is the point where your rotation will be. Uh, so we will rotate around this point, basically. I'm gonna hit like that. I think that's okay. Remember, at the end I have a keyframe, which is this position over here. So I will have some sort of a looping animation happening here. So now if I go from the first frame, play this, it will take a little bit of time. Again, it may crash, okay? Um, be prepared for this. And uh, yeah, he's um, putting some capture and um, bumping his head to the beat, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and again, he doesn't have capture here, but we can add that. Uh, Let's say we make a new layer and we make frame by frame animation in that layer based on this animation. But overall, we have our cut out animation, even though we didn't have the separate elements on the separate layers, which is the ideal way to do your cut out animation. Uh, usually, that's how they do it. They have uh, you are provided with the illustrations, which are on separate layers, and based on, with, on those, you can move them, move them around, and you get that sort of cut out animation. And uh, if you want to get this uh, comic book style, you need to have the illustration in that style in order for this to work. And this is pretty much it. I know that in the original animation, 
Uh, if I go back here, it's a bit different. I have added other stuff to it. Um, but if if you want me to walk you here, uh, which is not this one, I have a shadow there. If I hide this, this, this is my original animation that I did, and I have only two layers on that one. I have the body, and I have the ketchup. It pretty much the same thing is happening. I drew this right. I drew I drew this separately. Even I didn't finish here the shadow, and then I drew the the um the head on top, and to you know if I play this now I should play. Please don't, please don't crush. Come on, two hours later. There you. Go. I don't know. Um, it's it's okay. It's okay. Anyway, this is all for me. I hope you enjoyed this. I did something similar. Um, but I did want to show you that you can still get this um, effect once I saw the video. So yeah, that, that's actually a cool video, but hmm, you can do that. You can do that in Kurtzer. Now, uh, again, you can just use Kurtzer, just cut out the elements, uh, the elements you want, and you can animate it in different programs. That won't crash. Uh, but even, even though, uh, here's a simple scene, and it looks good in my opinion. I hope you like this. Um, I have been very busy last week, and very it was a very stressful week for me, and my whole face now is covered in pimples. I guess you don't see that, but anyway. Uh, until then, until the next one, um, you know, hope you subscribe and like and just share and dislike whenever you feel like it, and uh, yeah, stay healthy. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye.